Uh, morning. So, you know, I walked into this room thinking we'll have just another conference and another, uh, uh, you know, panel discussion like we usually have. But uh, then I found that we have few people who are like very, very full of energy and it'll be very difficult to keep them quiet and have them sit through the event, right? So we'll try something different today. We'll do it standing and uh, it'll be a little bit of stories and skit and discussion all rolled into one. So obviously we're trying it for the first time. Let's see how it goes, right? Uh, our topic today is about uh, the new age customer. And my point on this is that whenever we think about customer, right, we think that it's on another planet mein hai and we are here eye gazing and thinking that it's which customer. Hai. But we fail to realize that we're customer, hai, right? So what's happening at our house, with our kids, our cousins, what's happening with people around us is what the customer is going through as well. So there has been a huge change in terms of the expectation of these people. So your kids obviously are not the same like they used to be 20 years back, right? They have a mind of their own. Their media consumption is very different. Their uh, orientation towards buying is very different. And we want to capture that. And most of us, when we're discussing inside, we had this story uh, which was very personal. So we wanted to kind of get that uh, across. And uh, we'll have each one of us talk about that. We'll start with the bag woman of India. I think uh, she's the lady who started Bag It 35 years back. Uh, and has been an inspirational journey, right? To start 35 years back and do it over a period of time. The, what I would want you to talk about mainly is, you know, how do you see the customer moving in the last 35 years? Okay. We will, we will look at Baggett's That's how we started the job. Is it on? Is it on? Oh, you can take it. Yeah. Okay. Don't you want to beat it, beat it? And that's how we started Bagot. Anyway, so I think we're talking about the new consumers, right? So we were saying that uh, backstage we were talking, and I was like, my daughter only buys on Instagram. And then so many times when you buy stuff on Insta, pant kharido, shirt aajata hai. You don't know what kind of a brand, what, what kind of a quality for cosmetics you are using. And she says, I said, it's not a brand. Why are you buying something which you don't know? She says, I don't care. So that era of the brand, that quality that I'm going to get, I think is bygone. She found the content good, she found what she, she liked it, and she picked it up. And that's, that's where it ends. So I think it's very, very scary for a brand that's been here for so many years, bag it. <laughs> we really got to change. And I think that's great conversation that we are bringing forth. Yes. You can all we'll have, Yeah, yeah. So we can all stand and do it, right? Uh, Anand, why don't you go in next, right? So Anand obviously handles Arrow, which is a legacy brand, and all... Come and introduce yourself. Yeah, yes, I think... <laughs> yeah, we I think uh, I, I, we all know that the consumers are evolving and changing, and I think for every brand, it's very important that we, you know, uh, evolve with the changing needs of the customer, and if, yes, as uh, Dheeraj said, that Arrow is a you know, legendary brand launched in 1851 in New York. And I think uh, over the period, it has refreshed over the multiple times as per the changing consumer needs. So, for example, uh, we are talking about the younger consumer, so I will not... Uh, so we have Arrow, which is our uh, you know, formal brand for the sartorial men. But then the consumer, the younger consumers are coming in who want something very different for the formal occasion. He wants, they don't want to wear something what his dad was wearing. He doesn't want something which is boring, right? So we had to, you know, uh, innovate. We had to change. We have we launched a sub brand called Arrow New York, which takes care of the younger consumer needs, uh, you know, uh, in the occasion space. So you know, where he he gets something which is more quirky, more functional, performance uh, related, and design aesthetics are very different for the younger consumer. So similarly, when we were looking at it, uh, at one point of time, I was just telling them that the age is just a number. Uh, so a lot of, uh, uh, we had a you know, mindset that the mature consumer dresses in a certain way. But you know, of, if you see last four, five years, the way the, the, that market is also has evolved, the mature consumers also want to wear something very fashionable, but the design sensibilities are different from the younger consumer. So we had launched a new sub-brand called 1851 from the heritage, and that's something caters to a, a mature consumer for what he will wear for a board meeting, or what he will wear for a Sunday brunch, or what he will wear in the evening occasion. So the, we as brand, we have to change the design sensibilities uh, for different consumers. And I think that's what the brand has been doing in terms of refreshing itself and being relevant 
for the changing consumer. Yeah, that's amazing. Now we have Ankur. What's your story, right? You, you're the lingerie man, <laughs> right? You're talking about comfort, fit, design. Bring it all, right? Give us the whole context of how this uh, segment is developing and how do you see the new customers. So we are a 138 year old brand, and you know, for legacy brands like us, which are centuries old. It's, it's very difficult to, you know, keep pace with, uh, you know, what's happening in this dynamic environment. And one of the very good things is that, you know, we are also manufacturers. So we manufacture for a lot of other brands. And there is a lot of research that goes into, you know, what we do. And uh, with the changing times, you know, uh, things are becoming so dynamic uh, with social media, with, you know, Gen Z coming in. So obviously, you know, things have to change. There are trends which keep on changing. One good thing is being an international brand, we are, you know, consumer first and we get a lot of data and research globally and that's why we not just follow trends but we create trends and uh, one of the things which you know of course uh, comfort uh, fit that's sort of a given but uh, you know a lot of brands don't get it right because you know uh, women's shapes and bodies are so different across the globe you know and even within a country within a region you know there are so many specifics that you have to get into so you know we uh, what we do very differently is that uh, it's not just about uh, you know fit but it's also about feel and uh, you know what gen z is also looking at is they just don't want to feel good you know they want to look good as well so you know your usual lingerie of the blacks and whites and the browns you know that's now changing the trend is towards also looking good you know so new colors uh, a lot of design a lot of fashion so it's becoming more of a lifestyle product but a lot of things that we also come you know being industry leaders we also want to educate the customer so I'll tell you a story, uh, you know, we did a research and we found out that, and it's uh, very fascinating because more than 60% of women actually don't know the right size of the bra that we they, they wear. So you might think that you're wearing the right size, but it's not, you know, it keeps changing as well. So we did a campaign, uh, you know, online and offline. So offline was like, you know, a bra fit challenge. Uh, you incentivize the customer as well so that, you know, uh, the customer wants to try it. And then, uh, you know, we found out that there are so many women who don't know the size who don't know the intricacies. So there is a lot of education that also goes into it. And from a lot of this research, what we found out also is that, you know, the same size might not fit, you know, a particular size, three women have the same size, but you know, there are so many different aspects to it. So with technology and innovation, we are trying to bridge that gap. And what we are doing is that, uh, you know, we are almost like a made to measure brand. So with, uh, with our revolutionary technologies and innovation, so we are coming with fabrics that actually takes the shape of the body. So even if you are, you know, the similar size, you know, your body movement, uh, you know, your body structure is very, very different across the globe. And uh, with these new technologies, so we have a series called Smart Series. So different uh, products catering to different needs. But what it does is that it's an intuitive technology which takes the shape of the body. And, uh, you know, even while you move, it takes the shape of your movement. So, you know, these are some of the things that, uh, we bring on the table with a lot of innovation and understanding what the consumer really wants. A lot of times, you know, you get consumed in your own products, in your own stuff, but uh, it's very important how you stay close to the consumer. And for next generation brands, this is really important because, you know, you have to be ahead of the curve. You know, you need to create that market, you need to create that technology, or you need to uh, solve those problems before anybody else solves it. Uh, the next person that we have wants to be called as the modern man, right? So I'm very curious, what does the modern man today stand for? Please, stage is yours. Hello, my name is Nenad. Uh, I'm the co-founder of a brand called Hello. Uh, we are a brand for modern men. And that's the reason why, you know, he's referring to my, probably my LinkedIn descri description that says chief modern man. Uh, we do that because, you know, we've defined the TG as modern men. And if we don't walk the talk, right, starting with us co-founders, uh, we've got to be seen and perceived as modern men. So that's the reason. Um, what do we do? Uh, we are a men's accessories company, uh, and our hero product is, is the watch strap. Uh, it all began with my journey as a watch collector. Before that, I was into advertising, marketing, brand building. You know, I'm, I've spent my entire career doing that. Uh, and, uh, you know, it just... Uh, this is a business that started because of uh, my love for something um, and it is not a business that I have grown to love, you know. Uh, so I don't know which is a good uh, site to be on. Uh, I would like to believe that this is a great site to be on because we love what we do so much. 
that doing business for around it because just becomes very easy. Um, and uh, yeah, Watchstraps is our uh, is our hero product. Uh, we are a, we are an everyday carry uh, brand for modern men. We would like to believe we actually believe that you know there aren't really uh, any really cool brands for modern men uh, because the man is undergoing a lot of uh, cultural tensions in the way he wants to portray himself to the world uh, because of what is happening with feminism, what is happening with his expectations in society. And we are a brand, we believe that style is substance. You know, I mean, the society has relegated style to a very superficial thing. We don't believe in that because that's the only thing that separates us from animals, right? Our style and how we portray ourselves. That's what makes all of us look different. You look at five tigers, you won't be able to recognize, you know, which of them is which, right? But that's not true about humans. So we believe that style is substance. It's a carefully curated choice by each and every human being. And uh, we want to give the modern man a really great platform to, to, to achieve his fullest with, with what we have on offer. The next person we have here, uh, when I met her today morning, the first thing she said was, you know, I'm a Sindhi. So we have a Sindhi sitting. <laughs> the mic did not agree with that, right? We have a <laughs> Sindhi selling jewelry, right? So, and selling to Zen Z. So would love to hear what you have to say. Hi, good afternoon. Um, so my name is Sonali, and I'm the co-founder of Tonic Retail Brands. We started Tonic Retail Brands predominantly to create fashion accessories accessible to the country. When we started Tonic Retail Brands, we started with the premise that fashion jewelry was either very expensive or it was something you got on the streets. And we said, how do we bridge getting accessories more accessible? And we've kept that premise for the last 10 years that we've been working on the brands. Today we have Tonic, which focuses on Western jewelry. We have Fida, which is completely handcrafted Indian jewelry. And the Bro Code, which is for men's accessories and for men's jewelry. Uh, we both have an online as well as an offline space. And the idea really, again, was accessibility. Uh, so when we're talking about the Gen Z customer, our brands have always been focused to the young customer either in the Western space or in the ethnic, and now in the men's space as well. Um, the one major change which we are definitely seeing with this customer is two or three things. One is web rooming, where they're checking out the web, and then they're coming into the stores for the tactile touch and feel of jewelry. We also have customers in the stores, and then checking out prices on the web. Now, these are customers that are digital natives, very, very comfortable with technology. And they're also customers who know what they want. This is not like 10 years ago when we started, where as a brand, we would tell customers, this is the trend, buy into the trend. Today, the customer will tell you, I already know the trend. I hope you have it. And I think it's our jobs as retailers to say, what are the trends customers want? And how quickly can I deliver it? Earlier, for us, a trend would take anywhere between 90 to 120 days from the time we saw it. Uh, everyone was talking about WGSN yesterday. Um, and we would bring it in, in 120 days. Today, we're able to bring trend in in about 40 days. And we've reduced that. Predominantly, one, because we're accessing different kinds of information. Where are these customers really shopping from? What are they looking at? And Instagram is a great place. We also reduced our time to production and time on floor to make sure we got trend in at the same time as international brands. So today we try and make sure it's kind of mirroring exactly at the same time what's happening internationally because your customer today has access to that information. So one of the things we did last year was uh, Barbie core was a very big trend that we saw. And we launched an exclusive licensed product for Barbie, where we're the official license. And that's done really, really well. So even when it comes to big shows like a Game of Thrones or Bridgerton and now Emily in Paris, these are things customers really want to buy into these stories. So we find that really works for us. Okay, let's mix this up, right? This is getting boring again, right? <laughs> so I want uh, to get all of you out of your comfort zone. I want you to talk as a customer of your brand. That if Say, if there's a customer who's buying Arrow, what does he want to communicate to you as a brand? How has he changed? So 
So I want you to talk. For, I want you to talk about uh, from the perspective of the customer, not from the perspective of the brand. Yeah, Any I think uh, uh, I think that's what I said. That you know, ki, uh, I think the brand is for the customer, and you know, uh, we have to do what the customer is looking for. Or talk from the perspective of the br uh, customer. Ki main customer hoon, Aroka. Hmm. Pehle mujhe ye chahiye tha, aaj ye chahiye. Is tarah se mera dimag change ho gaya hai. You no know, things like that, right? Let's make it a little more interesting. I think yeah, I said exactly the same thing that. As a customer, when I was a matured customer, I used to buy blues and formal shirts, striper shirts, and I was saying that that's the wardrobe. But today, the the even the matured consumer wants something uh, different, right? Uh, the blazer, you know, we are uh, one of the largest selling blazer brand in the country. Even the blazers, at one point of time, it was more blues and blacks and very basic kind of product. Today, the consumer is coming and saying that I want something fashionable. They are looking for new colors. You know the colors like pink, colors like uh, uh, I think the uh, you know uh, you know the light green, fashionable red. Those are the kind of colors that we would have not imagined men wearing it or matured men wearing it, right? Today we see that you know those kind of blazers are flying off the shelf. You know people want to be experimentative. They are open to you know, try something new. Uh, I think that the fashion quotient in the men's category he was also mentioning that you know uh, every uh, men today uh, wants to create a uh, you know sort of a uh, you know a persona of his own. They want customization. Like, discussing, right? like if you go in the London Tube, you see every person is looking very different, right? Someone has got chotiya, someone is wearing something else, someone is putting a bandana, right? This is so yeah, different. So I think. But if you look around here, what do you see? No, I think that in, uh, I think slowly, slowly that individuality, it's, it's, the trend it's, it's is evolving, yeah. and that's what I'm saying. It's evolving. That you know, at one point of time, it's the blues which was selling. You know, you go and look at the sell through in the sh in the boat, you will see all blues having very good sell through and fashion colors sell throughs were slightly lower. Today, you look at it, the differentiated. Yeah. You know, the whites and the core is not selling. It's the fashion which is selling right now. So yeah. the con the Indian men, as you said, the modern Indian men is also evolving over the period of time. The kind of colors of blazers. That you know that we sell today, I would have not approved in the line a couple of years back. Okay, the the fashion consciousness is just growing, and people so I have definitely a, so want a persona. So of I have their a own. slightly counterpoint to that. Uh, I think uh, listening to consumers is highly highly overrated. Uh, I don't listen to all my consumers. I listen to them. I read each and every di uh, direct message that we get on Instagram. I'm not kidding. I mean, this is the third year of our business. The first two years were more as hobby or whatever. But for example, I get told, oh, uh, you have a black strap with blue stitch. Can you give it to me in orange stitch? Okay. Uh, but he doesn't know that a strap comes in. Of course, he knows, but he doesn't care. A strap comes in 16 mm, 18 mm, 19 mm, 20 mm, 21 mm, 22 mm, 24 mm. Right? I can't make a orange stitch only for him. So I will hear what they've got to say, but I will not. Because if I start doing that, uh, it's inventory management is going to be a nightmare for me. Right? So it's great to listen to them, but ultimately you've got to go with what you believe is right, uh, because consumers are. If you put the, if you give them everything, then you know they are going to ask you for the moon, and that is practically not possible. You play with what you've got, and you create magic with it. You show that that is the best that you have for them, and you pitch it in the right way. So that's yes. my perspective on the consumer. Okay, I, I think, I uh, think again, uh, I'll, I'll counter this, right? So we are again talking to the customer. Let's talk as a customer, right? So I, I'll, I'll give it a shot. Let's see how it goes. I buy Campus Sutra. The first one I got in 4,000, the shirt I got in 4,000, now it's in 1,000. It's very funky. It does not follow the old tradition that cotton should be white, blue should be white, blue should be white. Online, there are 10,000 options. Unlike the established brand, there are 10 products. They put on a lot of good videos on Campus Sutra. I buy it on Instagram. Uh, right? So let's talk from the customer perspective, right? So this is my sense of how Campus Sutra customer would talk, right? Let's try this I for think, all uh, the brands. I think one fundamental change, I'm talking generally speaking, not just for Triumph alone, but uh, cus customer has become very, very smart, you know? And one fundamental shift is that customer is looking for value. So like you said, you know, uh, and they are looking at brands from a different perspective, from a brand persona perspective also. There are a plethora of brands, you know, but why do I choose one brand? You know, what does the brand stand for? So I think there are a lot of these things that are like coming into the picture now. So the consumer is willing to spend, 
but what value are they looking at, you know, deriving out of it? So, you know, similar to what you are saying, 4,000 rupees short or 1,000, you know, but what is giving them that kind of value? And they've become very smart. So as a consumer, I have so many touch points, right? Uh, you can't fool me by differential pricing or, you know, things like that, because I'll be going online. I'll be going on the, you know, uh, physical stores. I'll be going to a departmental store. So I think uh, that's something that has really changed. So how you integrate everything and uh, how you deliver that value to the consumer, I think that's something which is a fundamental shift. And, you know, especially with accessibility to so many uh, platforms, media, internet, you know, social media, I think, uh, you know, that, that's what a lot of consumers are looking at, you know, and in fact, even the influencers that you use, you know, all of these things make a lot of impact. And that's why a lot of brands now, of course, you know, you'll have an A-lister, but you're also moving towards micro influencers because, you know, customer in specific pockets, they will look at their micro influencers, their right. heroes, and, and their And then you communities. can put in new trends, like for example, in handbags, we got miniature handbags. Uspe mobile bhi nahi fit hota hai. Kaun karidega mobile bhi nahi le jaoge, to kya le jaoge bag mein? Right? But then we started doing it on Instagram, and because it's such a small, you know, you don't have to do a huge quantity, and soon we got so much traction. So those are many things that you can introduce. I think the, also the feedback mechanism comes in harder and faster. So for example, if we have a customer come into the store, they saw something on our website and we don't have it in the store, they're very vocal about that. If they feel a sales staff doesn't mirror who they are, in the sense it's not young, doesn't speak in the language they speak in, uh, doesn't have this kind of terminology that they're used to talking in. So our age group for even our sales reps is very young because that is the audience they're talking to. They've got to dress a certain way. We like them to accessorize a certain way. We wouldn't have done that 10 years ago. We had them very dressed very formally. Today, even sales teams are casually dressed because we're talking to a more casual customer. We also have customers telling us what they want. So for example, we've had customers turning around and saying, why don't you do waterproof jewelry? That's what I want. And they expect you to deliver on that because if you stop listening to what they're saying, they're going to move on to a brand that is listening to what they say. And at the end of the day, they decide you know, the success or the future of our brands. So that listening mechanism, I think, is becoming louder and more important. And it's how we kind of integrate our teams to kind of react to those demands faster. Let's do some future gazing, right? Ten years from now, how will your customer look like? I think uh, ten years from now, the... I think uh, it's very unpredictable how your customers are going to be because they are just changing and the trends are coming so fast. You know, uh, it's, it's just not, you know, right now the slim fits were doing good, but within a two months that we are seeing that, you know, the, the, there's a lot of loose fits are there in the market, the, the color that their consumer expecting. So I think the, the, the consumers are moving much faster than what we have seen. And I think uh, I will not try to you know, foresee what a customer will be 10 years after. You know, I mean, I don't know what I'm talking about 10 years after. How will the modern man look like after 10 years? I think there was a modern man in every era. Uh, so, he probably, he will dress slightly differently. But uh, even modern men in the 70s wanted to look in a particular way. Right, when uh, Levi's uh, jeans were, you know, uh, when Hollywood celebrities started wearing them and when the world started wearing jeans, those were the modern men of those times. And then women also wanted to be like that. So I think uh, we as a brand, why am I coming to that is that we as a brand choose to focus on unchanging themes, choose to focus on the core essence of what makes us as people, what builds culture, because everything around is transient. I don't think you can, you can have a business around uh, transitory things. You cannot build a brand on transitory things. And one, one of my uh, issues with the way marketing is happening in India is we are not brand focused. You know, I mean, I've spent my entire career working on brands. You look at America. I mean, I mean, you've got to learn how to build brands from them. Name me one brand from India. Modi. One brand from India <laughs> that has made waves globally. Yes, yes, probably. But I'm saying brand, a brand that's a business. Name me one brand. You will struggle. Taj Hotels is probably there. Kingfisher was there. But I'm saying name me one brand which is made, like name me a McDonald's from India. Name me a, uh, a whatever, DHL. Name me, you know, any of those global brands. So I think we need to be more brand focused. But now our time has come. No, when it comes, we'll say yes, hats off. But I'm saying time has come, but 
will an international consumer say, wow, great brand, I want to buy it? Like when will we start selling in the US, in... Uh, Sutra does already actually. Sorry? We are in 22 countries. Which is fantastic, which is fantastic. But I'm saying that we need to be more brand focused because most conversations that we do around business are around features. I mean, I was there, in, I was sitting here and listening to the uh, snippets from the previous uh, uh, conversation. Uh, yes, there will be many brands who will talk about sustainability, about artists, but that's a narrative that is common to everyone. How do you choose that you will be different in that narrative? It's something that will help you build a brand. That's, that's the How point. will bags look like in 10 years? I think they'll be very individualistic. They will not be like all the men wearing a blazer here, for example, and wearing pants, shirt. Not at all like that. Like I think the women have really taken off. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> I mean, you when you go abroad, you don't see everyone dressed like one carbon copy, right? <laughs> and anyway, so I think the women have taken up, and you know, I, like I'll see my daughter never wearing a pair of jeans. She'll be in loose flowing clothes, and they're very, very trendy. All her friends, and I think that's the. It's more an individual, and this is what my look is, and this is the kind of bag I will carry. It's not everyone is carrying a bloody tote and a hobo and a palana. And how will the lingerie, or as you like to call it, bra, look like in 10 years? <laughs> <laughs> uh, We've been teasing him back yeah, yeah. he's going on 10 years. <laughs> I'm just so conscious not to use that word, you know. <laughs> but it's difficult. What about the action that you're doing? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I think, uh, you know... Sorry, there's uh, a no bra trend going on, so... <laughs> you know, that's a, that's a very <laughs> good point. So, you know, uh, what consumers are also looking at now is that, you know, a bra, like a zero feel bra, you know. That's one of our products. So uh, obviously, you know, the no bra trend is going on and consumers obviously feel uh, suffocated. It's, it's not very, very comfortable. So I think these are some of the things that, you know, brands are like looking for. So we've launched a bra that's called Zero Feel. So you don't feel like you are wearing a bra, it's seamless. So I think these are some of the things, uh, I mean, like we say, one bra at a time, you know, one consumer at a time. That is something that is like, you know, the consumer after 10 years, maybe that they are not looking for what size, they are looking what is in for me, you know. We are, I was looking at some virtual reality, reality stuff, somebody was trying to tell us that, uh, so they've made something for apparel. So if you're wearing a large size instead of a medium, it will show like how the fall is and stuff like that. So we were just asking how, how you can make that for lingerie, you know. It's very difficult because, you know, you've got like, unlike normal apparel or footwear, you'll have like 40 sizes, you know. So how do you optimize those 40 sizes? So I think consumers are looking for more personal, more individualistic things. So I think maybe that's the future. So let's do on the feet thinking, right? You spoke about Indian brands not being able to capture the market. I think jabbi change hota hai, it gives opportunity to new brands. And we, I think the world is in a flux. There's a lot of things happening. So one, two ideas of how Indian brands can actually make an impact on a worldwide stage, right? Given the changes in customer, there's the woke culture that's happening in the West. There are people who are looking at fluid sex, whatever, right? There's so many things that are happening. So what are the two, three insights that they can pick up and make changes to the brand, which can make it global? Uh, for us, we found like genderless jewelry is we're seeing kind of an uptake there. And it's interesting because we're starting to see that happen. Uh, I think the need for personalization, and that was something we discussed offline as well, is everyone wants to feel like they build, belong to a community and yet they're very unique. So they want to put their own individual stamp on whatever they purchase and kind of wear it and uh, put it together in their own way. And I think that's going to continue. So the sense of being an individual and being unique, and I think celebrating uniqueness is going to be a big theme that's going to kind of show up a lot more. I, uh, as per me, I think the change is, uh, no, no. It's very important and then the brands which are able to embrace the change and able to innovate and I think that's something the pillar which I will always say that any brand has to, if you have to be ahead of the curve, you have to either uh, understand the customer's pain point and then create a solution to the pain point or uh, adapt to the you know, uh, consumer uh, changes or con some of the trends that is happening in the market. So I think uh, if, you are, if you are able to, most of the innovations have come from uh, either the changing consumer needs or a pain point. So, example, in Arrow, I think uh, why the brand has been relevant uh, even after uh, being a legendary brand launched in 1851 to today, we are still refreshed and today is still the highest recall brand is because it's built on the pillar of innovations. The brand was many first 
whether it's a detachable collar way back, uh, you know, when we launched the brand, uh, I, to uh, a smart shirt, to uh, uh, you know, a stain free shirt, to uh, flexi waist trouser based on the consumer pain point. So I think when the brand will innovate and create products which is which either solves their pain point or uh, uh, is as per the changing trend, I think that's when the brand will uh, be relevant and will continue to be relevant in the coming times also. Yeah, uh, the way I look at uh, it is always, you know, there are two parameters that are most important for judging a brand. One is differentiation, the other is relevance. You know, if you've got to really simplify it, I think we are all extremely intelligent enough to figure out how can we make our product and brand relevant. Uh, you know, what she mentioned is, you know, the uniqueness, which is the differentiation. I think we need to push ourselves harder to ensure that there is differentiation, in, uh, there is enough differentiation that helps it build a brand and it will automatically find traction with people. And I think it's so much more easier with social media and then I guess all of, the, all of us women or even men today work from home is still existing, going camping, doing a meeting somewhere outside. I think the handbags would also evolve with that. You know, uh, one insight that came to me during the session, right? You could see that few of us were uncomfortable, right? In today's day and world, the customer is making the brand uncomfortable every day. He or she is asking you questions which they were not asking earlier, right? He's asking you uh, for value. He's asking you to be cool. He's asking you to speak his or her language. And that's the transition that each and every brand has to make. And I think that's going to be the challenge going forward. Uh, with that, please ask questions. You know, just, just one last point here. I think this is the, this is the best time to be a new age brand and it is probably one of the worst times to be a legacy brand because as you rightly mentioned consumers are asking questions and legacy brands are really jittery right and they have but too many choices absolutely and they don't too care to who's, whether it's a brand they don't it. care loyalty is at its uh, you know it has its lowest so i think it's a great time to be a new brand sorry but you are standing next to a legacy brand <laughs> <laughs> so you know i i'll beg to differ on that because that's what i started with that you know a 138 year old brand. My previous company, La Cruze, was like almost a century old brand. It's a market leader. We are the market leaders in either number one or number two in wherever we operate. So I think it's not about legacy brands dying out. You see so many European brands which are legacy brands, you know. So it's how you, you know, adapt yourself uh, in this dynamic yeah, environment. Yeah, yeah, don't take it how uh, <laughs> that we will be <laughs> I'm counter you know, because it's not that legacy brands are not uh, dynamic enough to understand. So that's where, you know, uh, your innovation and your relevance comes in. And, you know, one more point that we were talking about. It's like, lasted so many years, we're going to last. Absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, one of the things is that consumer asking so many questions. One thing which is also very challenging in offline retail is that consumer will ask you, are you wearing that same product or are you using the product? You know, things like that. So I think even from that perspective, the kind of training... Uh, that you need but to give. You can't, you can't hear, unfortunately. You know, when you <laughs> explain to the uh, consumer, she will ask, are you wearing one? <laughs> yeah, I think uh, we should ask the consumer to... Yeah, consumers, <laughs> from a consumer perspective, any questions, right? We still have two minutes, so we are doing the Dhiruva Mani thing. We are safe. Absolutely. <laughs> I agree with that. <laughs> hey, hey. Yes. I think you can just excuse me. Hi, this is Amit. Uh, I work very closely with the offline space of the stores. Uh, what I feel is that consumers are in a very good spot to know what they don't need to do. If you look at food, you look cosmetics, all these new brands came and told everything we were using were bad. Now, this is the product which is good. They have cluttered the market with a lot of good products, what they claim to be good, which I'm sure could be good or bad. But as you said, legacy brands, I will still trust a FMCG company like a Unilever or a PNG to learn what they have disrupted and capitalize on the brand they have built for so many years. How do we declutter as a customer? I think we are over confused. Every day with, I, I don't follow Instagram. I'm not that kind of the customer per se. I think we are confusing the customer by giving them too many options. Every day, one trend is in, one trend is out. Do we really go back and we talk about sustainability and stuff? Do we need so many trends? Aren't we confusing the guy or the girl to that extent 
that they know what they should not do, but whatever options that is so-called justified by cosmetic food, when I look at Shark Tank, I can only see cosmetic in this. Sure. <laughs> yeah, the question is how do we, the question is that how do we as a customers don't get so confused by overwhelming options. So, so we are actually an underbranded country. If you compare us to any other developed market, the number of brands per category are much, much lesser even compared to Europe. So, uh, and look at the population of Europe, look at our population. Uh, I think where the confusion happens is because most brands keep talking the same things, which is where I am again coming back to the point. If you have clearly differentiated brands, then consumers choices become very clear. This is this brand's narrative. I'll go for this for this reason. I resonate with this for these reasons. That is not seen as much in the country as, as we would like it to be. Think of Doordarshan and cable TV, right? When you had Doordarshan, maybe things were not as great, right? So while there is a lot of clutter on TV, 90% of the people would think things are better now. So I think that's another way of looking at how things are with brands. Thank you. Hi, can I put up a question? He handed the mic, so I thought I might as well ask. <laughs> okay, so uh, is... Perfect. So I was asking, wanting to ask that is any of the brand looking at, uh, like you were talking about gender neutrality, one of you, and there is so much of confusion as, I mean, in my mind, I, uh, regarding using of the pronouns like he, him being addressed as people and the gender Z wants to be addressed as she, her, and you know, they, them. So it's, there's a lot of like, they have, they've explored their, uh, uh, the, the gender and sexuality and they want to have products which are sort of, you know, they very individualistic to what they feel, like a man feels like a woman and uh, blah, 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 and you know, all that. So you think that uh, with uh, the advent of time and how times are changing and Europe and US are already doing things like that. So when you're offering products and services to the Gen Z or the millennials also now, so you think that if products are going to be that specific you know, as for them, and how the salesmen are addressing them, for example, like a Made in Heaven, I think, I'm sure a lot of us have seen that serial there. So if you see, they were catering to a marriage, yes. The question is that are we looking at these products and services, are the brands working towards it, that they're going to be that specific, looking at how the people choose to be addressed as, the products customized as for them, or gender neutral? Absolutely. And I don't think you can ignore that anymore. I mean, it might make us uncomfortable because we don't understand it yet, but you can't ignore it because that is who they are. They're very comfortable with being fluid. And I'm not saying it might be a general population, but it's a large enough to address it and pay attention to it. And I think you can't kind of bifurcate saying this is only for women, this is only for men. And I think we're already seeing that in makeup. You're seeing a lot of men using makeup, men using nail polish. Um, I think what people used to think is odd is going to start becoming more common than we realize. We're seeing that with men's jewelry. We didn't get into the offline space for men five years ago, even though we've been talking about it for that long. Today, we find men very comfortable wearing a lot of jewelry and layering it, which we didn't see. So this is just moving forward in terms of that personalization and kind of shifting identities in that sense. I waxed my hands for the first time in my life because I need to take photos of my wrists. So I would have looked down upon it a few years back. Yeah, someday I'll tell you my makeup. So <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.